hello and welcome to the Z-Access YouTube channel, where we talk about what I consider to be fringe access issues, which I wish were covered more in mainstream conversations about accessibility. Today, we are going to talk about some basics related to the Orca screen reader. If you are unfamiliar with the Orca screen reader, it is the screen reader used in Linux operating systems and specifically used with the GNOME desktop interface, which as far as I know is the most accessible, if not the only accessible, graphical user interface in Linux. Um, today I am using Ubuntu 18.04, um, which I will talk about maybe why in future videos. Um, and we're just going to focus on the basic basics of how to turn on and off the Orca screen reader and a little bit about the Orca configuration dialog box. So just as an overview, um, there are two ways to use a Linux operating system. Way number one, I believe is the way that most users use it these days, which is to navigate through a graphical user interface using the mouse. This is where Orca shines. So for instance, I have this GNOME applications list opened, and if I press the arrow keys, New Emacs 25 left parenthesis, e right parenthesis, push button. it reads the elements that are on the screen and it tells you what kind of element it is. So there you heard GNU Emacs, a version number, GUI, which is GUI, standing for graphical user interface, and then push button because these um, elements on this screen that we're looking at are push buttons. Uh, and I should have mentioned that this video, I am aware, has some issues related to levels of sound. I'm sorry that the screen reader's voice is loud relative to my voice. Um, I tried and tried to fix it with the screencasting software that I'm using, and hopefully as I get better at this, I will figure these things out. But for now, I'm sorry it's very loud relative to my voice. Um, New Emacs 25 left parenthesis terminal right parenthesis push button. So I have two GNU Emacs installed. One of them is terminal and one of them is, is GUI. Uh, parted push button. Here's G parted, which <laughs> if you're not familiar with Linux, these are very um, Linux specific applications that don't matter. But what matters is the screen reader is reading these applications on the screen. Okay, so Whistle. if you have a brand new Ubuntu installation, how do you start and stop the Orca screen reader? Well, there are two ways to do it. Um, way number one, and actually this is my least favorite way, uh, is to press win the Windows key, the Alt key, and S at the same time. So uh, sometimes in the documentation, they rebrand the Windows key as the super key. If you happen to own a laptop or desktop produced by a company like System76, um, which is my case. The Windows key is actually visually rebranded as the super key. Um, but anyway, if you press Alt Windows S, screen reader off. it turns it on and off. Since Orca was on, um, in my case, it turned it off. If we press it again, it will turn it on. Screen reader on. Uh, Desktop frame. And it will read desktop frame, kind of just like Windows. If you're familiar with using Windows or Mac, um, the GNOME interface has a desktop. Um, the other way to do it, and this is honestly my favorite way because this is kind of a fail, foolproof way of doing it, is if the screen reader is off, I'm going to turn it off again. Screen reader off. Uh, you can press Alt F2 to pull something up that's equivalent to the Windows Run dialog box. And it's not going to say anything because the screen reader is off, but I pressed Alt F2, and I will now type ORCA, the word ORCA, O-R-C-A. And uh, if you press Enter... Screen reader on. Desktop frame. It comes back on. So that's kind of how to start and stop Orca. There's also a way to start and stop it by going into the accessibility settings and clicking it on or using your keyboard to, to turn it on with your keyboard. But I'm not even going to cover that way because that's not how I do it. Okay, so how do we do such basic things as changing the speech rate and changing from a desktop keyboard layout to a laptop keyboard layout. Well, as with screen readers like JAWS and NVDA and VoiceOver, Orca screen reader has a configuration dialog box that is very similar to those. And there are two ways of accessing this configuration dialog box. The first way, uh, which is my least favorite way, is to press insert space. 
Insert space. Screen reader preferences. General page tab. For me, um, doesn't always work. So I, I don't generally use it. I'm delighted that it worked this time. Um, the other way to do it, though, Desk. is to press Alt F2. Window. Enter a command panel. Text. And this time we get the prompt because it's talking. And if you press ORCA or ORCA dash S for setup, it will also bring this dialog box. Window. Up. Desktop frame. Um, Content view panel. Icon view layer pane. Trash Nautilus link canvas. Screen <laughs> reader on. Screen reader preferences. General page tab. And this time, ironically, it uh, didn't receive keyboard focus right away, so it didn't read some things. Um, the, the thing I like about doing it this way is that if you are familiar with using the Linux terminal, you can uh, bring it up with by typing it in that way. And I believe, last I checked, there was even a text interface for it if you are not running a graphical user interface like GNOME so that you can set it up um, from an SSH session or from the command line. Okay. So what's in this dialog box? Well, as I said before, there's all the basic things you would want from a screen reader uh, like JAWS or NVDA. You can change the speech synthesizer. You may notice that I'm using the Eloquence text-to-speech engine, which is not the default in Linux. Um, I purchased it from a European nonprofit who is valiantly keeping eloquence alive for those of us who like it. Um, the default, if you do decide to turn this on by yourself in a new Ubuntu installation, the default is actually um, eSpeak. And I like eSpeak, but I like eloquence more. Um, so maybe in future videos, we will uh, we'll use eSpeak. But for now, we're using eloquence. Um, you can also change the keyboard layout, which is the one of the things we're going to do in this video because I am using a laptop and when the when the screen reader starts the default is to use a desktop keyboard layout and as we will see in a future video Orca utilizes the numeric keypad very heavily for screen review tasks and if your laptop doesn't have one of those and you don't have a desktop keyboard around it is very important to switch it to the laptop keyboard layout. In fact, I would argue that Orca is almost not usable if you don't have a 10 key numeric keypad and uh, are using a laptop. So I think the first thing we'll do is switch that and I'll show you kind of how to how changing the settings works. So uh, this is a multi-page tab dialog box. It works very similarly to such dialog boxes in Windows. There's a tab strip, and if you arrow across the tabs, it will change the uh, page that's being displayed in the dialog box. There are, you can also do that with control tab. Um, there's an OK button, a cancel button, and an apply button on all pages of the dialog box. And pressing the Apply button reloads the settings without closing the dialog box so that you can do things like make sure that your speech rate isn't too fast or make sure that you haven't destroyed your speech altogether, which is a possibility in Linux, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so on the General tab, keyboard layout panel, the desktop, very first thing we can do button. is Keyboard Layout Desktop. And it's a radio button, just like in Windows. So if you're familiar with using Windows, you're going to be pretty happy using this screen reader um, for most things in GNOME because the controls are the same and are, in fact, kind of modeled after Windows controls. And they work the same way, too. So if I want to select laptop, I can press down arrow. Laptop, selected radio button. And uh, this screen reader doesn't say radio button checked. It says selected radio button. Um, so... I'm not going to cover everything that's in this dialog box. There are a lot of things, and um, they're kind of self-explanatory, but I do want to sort of de demonstrate how this works. So, Progress bar updates panel. See updates checkbox checked. You know, we have a lot of the usual things that can announce uh, whether progress bars are changing when you're doing things like copying files. If you don't like that functionality, you can turn it off. Braille updates checkbox not checked. Um, Orca does have support for a Braille display, and it's separate from Braille TTY. So if you know something about how Braille displays work in Linux, uh, Braille TTY is separate from Orca. Beep updates, checkbox not checked. Um, you can beep. You can have it beep for progress bar updates, which is interesting enough that I might turn it on while I'm here and experiment with it. Checked. Um, so it's a checkbox, uh, and you can 
check and uncheck it with the space bar, just like in Windows. Not checked. Check. I was pressing the space bar there. And by the way, I'm tabbing through this dialog box. Frequency left parenthesis, sex right parenthesis, colon 10, select the spin button. Um, I don't know what that is. I would have to use some screen review commands to find out to get some context, which I could do. Uh, Cap selected. Whoops. Caps lock on. And I actually... Caps lock on. Switched it from laptop to desktop, and the settings must have already taken effect. So we won't worry about that right now. Zero. Wrist mouse panel. Present voltage checkbox not checked. Um, there's, there are mouse-related settings. So if you've used the NVDA screen reader, it works similarly in that you can move your mouse over an element on the screen, and it will read the element that's under the mouse. Uh, JAWS does not have that functionality. Last I checked... Um, it might now, but that's that's something that NV that Orca has sort of borrowed from NVDA. It's useful sometimes. Speed object on time and date okay, I'm gonna tab quickly now until I hit the apply button. Date form say all app enable struct announce block. With um, but there are a lot of interesting things in this on on this page, and this video could be hours long if I talk about everything. So I'll just hopefully wet your appetite enough to cause you to install Orca. Announce for announce announce list announce uh, app announce should have table. gone the other way. <laughs> say all by profiles load push button save as push button start a profile help push button apply push okay, button. Okay here's the apply it's a button if we press the space bar on this we're going to hear screen reader settings reloaded and then we will be um, using the laptop key layout. Screen reader settings reloaded screen reader off. I'm not at all sure why the screen reader went off um, this is one of the fun parts about using Linux. Sometimes things go wrong, and so I will just turn it back on, and hopefully it will come back on. Screen reader on. Desktop frame. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to edit this video because this is important to see. Um, there was a time when this is how <laughs> this is how Windows worked, too. Sometimes the screen reader would just randomly go off. Screen reader okay. preferences. I pressed General insert space. Pack. So the other kind of page I wanted to show was... Voice page tab. The voice page, um, this is a little bit confusing. When you first set it up, there are some things I automatically do. One of the first things is I obviously change it to eloquence, and I also change the speaking rate to uh, almost as fast as it can go. I have it slowed down for this video so that you can understand what it's saying. But voice type settings panel. Uh, this voice is where type. I believe Speech system. Speech dispatcher you combo can box. change the... The speech system, which is a complicated layer in between the text-to-speech engine and the screen reader that exists in Linux and does not exist in Windows. Um, maybe we'll do a future nerdy video about that, but not right now. Speech synthesizer. Default um, synthesizer combo box. This is where, if I wanted to, I could select eSpeak. Person. Um, default you can select all of the eloquence people that you might be familiar with if you use eloquence regularly. Capitalization style. Um, Rate, horizontal and this slider. is where you change the rate. So this is a horizontal slider, um, just kind of like Windows has sliders. Uh, Linux has these slider controls. 50. Um, I'm pressed page up, and I'm going 40. the wrong way. So 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. that's about how fast I usually have my speech. But I bet you can't understand that, so I will put it back at 80, 70, 60. 60, I think is what I decided I was going to use for these videos. Okay. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was how to turn on and off character echo because the next thing I do when I set up my screen reader is I turn on turn off typing and word echo. Speech uh, system. Voice so time. that Help push is apply push button cancel button. in another tab. Okay, push button. Voice page tab. Speech page tab. Um, Enable speech checkbox check. Verbosity panel. I'm sorry, Verbose. it's not in speech. Punctuation level panel. But this is where Most. you can adjust the punctuation level, which um, if you're a Linux user, I, I do recommend putting it at most or all because a lot of the terminal output um, or reading log files or reading code uh, is highly contingent on a user being able to hear uh, whatever speech. punctuation is in that text that you're reading. So this is where you adjust the punctuation settings. Speech page tab. Braille page tab. Uh, there's Braille uh, stuff if you're going to use a Braille display. I don't have a Braille display hooked up right now. Key Here we go. Tab. Key Echo has a dedicated tab, um, which is interesting and counterintuitive. There's n also, annoyingly and counterintuitively, not a keystroke to turn on and off Key Echo. So with NVDA, you know, you can just press insert 2 and it will be off for the rest of time. 
Uh, but with Orca, you do have to go in and manually turn it off the first time you set it up if you don't want it on. Enable key echo checkbox so there's a checked. checkbox. It's unchecked because I don't want to enable key echo. Enable echo by character checkbox There's another checked. option for uh, enabling echo by character. I am also not interested in hearing every character that I type. So the difference between enable key echo, checkbox key echo and checked. character echo is that key echo is keys like control and alt and shift. Um, which I really don't want to hear when I type those, but I guess if you're a beginner, it would be useful. Um, and Enable character echo characters. is what we normally think of when we type the letter A, it says the letter A, um, which I also prefer to not have on. But it's good to have a distinction. Enable echo by word uh, checkbox then we've got checked. the word echo, which is, you know, every time you type a, a word and press the space bar, it reads the word that you type. That is also um, a helpful helpful thing and actually something I recommend when I do assistive technology trainings if you're kind of an intermediate user or if you're using a phone it's handy to turn word echo on and all of the other ones off so that you just hear the words that you type and then you can kind of have a, a check on what you're typing as you type. Enable echo by sentence check There's not also checked. an echo by sentence option. I've never tried it out. I assume it's sort of self-explanatory. Might be interesting to try. Help and that's all that's on this tab. Apply, so push the first thing I do when I set up a new Linux system or a VM or something is I go in here and I set it up to the way that I want it to be set up, which is fast speech, no character echo, no key echo, and eloquence. And I verify that it has most punctuation. Okay, when I'm done, I press OK. Screen reader settings reloaded. It says desktop screen reader frame. settings reloaded Content and new. it puts me back on my desktop. So that is what I wanted to cover today. This is the beginning of a, hopefully, a big series on Linux accessibility in general. There is a lot to talk about in the Linux accessibility world that uh, few people talk about at conferences anyway, or in the higher ed space where I work. So I figure it's good to kind of have some basics down so that when we talk about more advanced things, um, people who are unfamiliar with the basics can refer to videos like this. So thank you for watching and see you next time.